joining us now, Alexander Wilkes, the executive director at America Rising, and Kevin Walling, the senior vice president at Hamburger Gibson Creative, to discuss this midterm election and whether candidates have been able to court millennials and young voters. A very you know, big deal for both sides. Welcome to you both. Thanks, Thanks Laura. I'll start with you. The way millennials have been, you know, talking and tweeting about getting out the vote, making a difference, has been very interesting to watch during this election cycle. Young voters traditionally sit out midterms, but this time it seems like it could be different. How do you think it's going to go Tuesday? Yeah, Laura, you're absolutely correct, and I couldn't be more excited to be talking about this with Alexandra and, and you today. You know, in 2014, only 20 percent of uh, millennial voters age 18 to 35 uh, turned out in a midterm election. Right now, in the early vote that we're seeing in states like Texas where it's up 500 percent from 2014 uh, in Tennessee where it's up over 700 uh, percent in the early vote uh, among millennial voters I, I think there's uh, really uh, uh, great news in terms of young people getting engaged and it's and it's across the board it's not just Democrats turn out uh, Republicans are leading the early vo vote in a you know in a tight state like Florida where you have two marquee uh, races in terms of the governor and the Senate uh, so I think voters on both sides young people on both sides are really engaging in this election and, and that's something to be celebrated and encouraged look it does definitely sound exciting and Alexander despite the get out the vote messaging recent polls show that less than one third of 18 to 34 year olds surveyed say they will definitely vote over 50 percent said they aren't familiar with the congressional candidates in their district and there's a lot of different polls out there but is there a way this millennial momentum can be you know fine-tuned to get them going well, look, I, I think that, you know, it's important to put some of these early voting numbers in context um, because, of course, while, while millennials are voting um, in greater proportion compared to the, the proportion that they voted in 2014, um, early voting of, is, of course, more popular than it was in 2014. It's, it's an older sort of concept. Uh, and we also know that millennial, uh, millennials are still being outpaced by their older counterparts. Um, so, you know, I don't know if we're going to exactly know how those numbers shake out come election day, particularly because millennials, unlike older voters, are more likely to be undecided or sort of uh, independent with no party affiliation mm -hmm. uh, than older voters are. So it's more difficult, I think, to predict uh, where it's going to come down. But I think that, you know, for Republicans, the, the strongest argument we can make to young people uh, is the strong job economy that's out right. there right now. Uh, this is a, a, a generation that grew up during, uh, you know, tough times. We saw our parents lose their jobs, their pensions in some cases. Uh, we've dealt with uh, record unemployment <laughs> for the last decade or so, um, and now that's starting to finally turn around. So I think that you know Republicans do have a strong argument to make with young people in these closing days of the election. Uh, Kevin, you know I want to show our audience some numbers because we've been talking about them. We know that turnout isn't always great in midterms, but you can see in the last midterm in 2014, 11.6 million 18 to 24 year olds reported themselves as registered, but only 4.7 million voted. In 2000. 2010, same pattern, 12 million registered, only 5.6 million voted. General election turnout was strong in 2016 and in uh, 2008. So what needs to happen to get these millennial midterm turnout numbers up? Because when we look at it and you see, you see that the millennials are definitely energized, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, Laura, that's a great question, you know, and, and that's at 20 percent. Uh, uh, figure I, I, I referenced before in terms of the uh, the number of voters uh, in 2014 turning out. Uh, so I think you know in Tennessee, for example, like I said, uh, you've seen a 700 percent increase from the 14 numbers to uh, the 18 numbers now. Uh, I think maybe that's uh, uh, you know the Taylor Swift bump that we saw uh, with her encouraging folks, uh, young folks, to turn out uh, to register to uh, get uh, get engaged and to turn out uh, for Phil Bredesen, who's running in a tight race against Marsha Blackburn. Uh, so again, I think uh, the more that we can encourage young people to turn out, speak to their issues. Alexandra's right. You know, we've got a strong economy, but that's not the only issue that affects young people. Obviously, college right. affordability, college debt, uh, health care, protecting pre-existing conditions. When the Republicans, we know if they retain power, want to take that away from young people making decisions about their parents' health care uh, and their coverage as they get older. You know, our parents who are baby boomers uh, and they get older and have to engage more in the health care system. Okay. Uh, so we want to make sure we're, we're providing those protections for young people making those decisions. Decisions. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for sharing your perspective on this. Obviously, this is a big one to watch. We'll see how they do on Tuesday. Kevin Walling, Alexander Wilkes, thank you for being here today. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Thanks for having us.